Okay, so here's a question from the Desmos activity from yesterday. And one thing that might be causing a little bit of a hiccup here is that we were very sloppy on the notation. Uh, but the derivative can be written either y prime or dy dx. So this would be the rate of change of y with respect to x. So wrt is with respect to. OK. So both of these things mean the same thing. So that's where we need to start. We need to start by finding the derivative of y with respect to x. And we have this equation here. And what's going on is the x's and the y's are all tangled up together. Like we cannot tease them apart. We can't get all the y's on one side and all the x's on the other side. They're tangled together. So this is what we call an implicitly defined function. The opposite of that would be explicit. And this would be the idea you can get y on one side and all the x stuff um, on the other side. So you can separate them. Okay, so you can separate the x and the y's. But here we cannot do that. So we have to use a strategy called implicit differentiation. The good news is this isn't really a new thing. It just looks scary and new. But it's basically the chain rule. Okay, that's all this is, the chain rule. And so what we're saying is that y is some function of x. We may not be able to express exactly what y is. We just know that it changes with respect to x, it depends upon x. Okay, so we have a problem where the x's and the y's can't be teased out, um, but we know, let's say that we know that y is some function of x. So then we just have to use the chain rule. So every time we take the derivative of a term that has a y in it, we have to multiply by stuff prime, right? So the chain rule is the idea that if you have f of stuff, when you take that derivative, you do f prime, plug in the stuff, and then multiply by stuff prime. So what we're basically going to be looking at is if we have the derivative of f of y, we're going to do f prime, plug in the stuff, multiply by stuff prime. So that's, that's basically the only thing we've got going on here. So let's take a look at this. We've got cosine of y plus x squared y equals x. And we want to take the derivative of this thing. So we're going to take the derivative of the entire equation. This is the first time we've seen an equation. We'll take the derivative of both sides, OK? So here we've got outer function, inner function. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Copy down the stuff, multiply by stuff prime. Now in this term, we've got a product. So we're going to have to do a product rule. So we're going to have two terms added together. The derivative of x squared is 2x, copy down the second function, write a plus sign, copy down the first function, multiply by the derivative of the second. Okay, so what is the derivative of y with respect to x? That's what needs to go here. The derivative of y with respect to x. Literally write that in mathematics, the derivative of y with respect to x. Or to be consistent here, we can use y prime. OK, equals. And then what's the derivative of x with respect to x? Let me know in the chat window. What's the derivative of x with respect to x? What am I going to put on the next side? Yep, slope of y equals x is just 1. OK, so what questions do you have up till this stage? And if the, the stuff with y's feels really crazy and you didn't do the Desmos activity, go ahead and hold on to your questions. We'll come back to, to take those questions in more detail. OK, but the big idea is that y is a function of x. And so when you take the derivative with respect to x, you have to use the chain rule. OK, so now. The question said, though, find y prime. And we have a whole mess of stuff here. We need to find y prime. Do you think we can isolate y prime? Like We couldn't tease the x and the y apart, but I think we can tease the y prime and get that on one side. So what we're going to do now is solve for y prime. 
or solve for dy dx, however you like writing it or however the question is worded, right? So I'm gonna get all the terms with the y prime on one side of the equation. So the whole term, so those two are gonna stay there. And anything that doesn't have a y prime needs to get shipped to the other side of the equation. So I will have a negative sine y, y prime plus x squared y prime equals one minus two xy. Okay, now I can factor. I'm gonna factor out a y prime. And that's gonna leave me with negative sine y plus x squared. And these almost always kind of have the same feel to them. So you're like, okay, get everything with y prime on one side, factor out the y prime, and then solve for y prime by dividing both sides by the factor that was left over. So we'll have the y prime will be equal to the numerator is one minus two xy, and the denominator is negative sine y plus x squared. So now we have an expression for y prime. A W in the chat window if you want me to wait. A Q if you want to type a question. So we need to type in a fraction. And the numerator is going to be 1 minus 2xy. And the denominator was a negative sine y plus x squared. OK, so we got that right. And then it opens up a new question. Now find the equation of the line tangent to the graph at the point 0 to pi over 2. So that's on this, this, uh, this graph, right? 0 pi over 2 is, is on the graph. So we need to use the derivative to find the slope. OK, so tangent line, so we have our slope. So y prime of 0, I could write it this way. This is maybe a little weird, but we need to think that this is the x value. This is the y value. So you have 1 minus 2 times x times y over minus sine of y plus x squared. So our derivative has two inputs, right? It has a two, an x and a y. So we have two numbers to plug in. So just plug in your 0 for your x's and your y's for y's, your pi over 2's for y's. So the numerator is going to simplify to 1. And let me know in the chat window what's negative sine of pi over 2. Kind of your trig real fast. What's, what's negative sine of pi over 2? Unit circle, pi over 2 is straight up and down, but the negative is going to flip it down here. What's that y value? All right, so to write the equation of a tangent line, we can use f prime of the point times x minus x naught plus y naught. And so the f prime we just found, so we're going to get a negative 1. We get x minus 0 plus pi over 2, grabbing that point from over here. OK, and then we can simplify this to negative x plus pi over 2. And then we'll head back over to the Desmos window. OK, so it put a line on the graph. And we should take a look at the graph. Does it look tangent? Does it look like it's just touching that curve at one point, at least locally? Like it crosses again someplace else, but at the point of tangency, that looks pretty good. It's not like cutting through the function or something crazy. It's actually lying nice and tangentially. So that's that's good. We've got a nice visual confirmation as well as the, the fancy little green check mark. OK, and now it's asking us for the other point down here. So that would be just repeating the same thing we've got going on here. First thing here, let's work through this, and then it's going to take me a minute to get the breakout room set up, but we'll, we'll get there. So if we look at x cubed plus y squared equals 8, we're going to take the derivative of the whole thing with respect to x. The x cubed bit is pretty straightforward. It's what we've been doing this whole time. Here's where things get a little tricky. So think about this as a stuff squared. So we're going to do 2 times stuff to the 1, copy down stuff, multiply by stuff prime. I'm going to erase that 1 because it looks like a prime. And then the derivative of 8 is 0. And so now we need to solve for y prime. So we're going to have 2y y prime equals negative 3x squared. So y prime is negative 3x squared over 2y. OK, so that is how that should work. Take a look at that. See if you get any questions. Um, type those into the chat window. OK. 
So this is the implicit differentiation lesson from Thursday. So it's linked on Canvas. You can follow along or you can work on it on your own as well. We'll just kind of work through it as a class here. Um, if we were going to take the derivative of cosine of x squared, we would need to do the chain rule. So we take the derivative of cosine, which is a minus sine, right? We copy down the stuff inside, and then we multiply by the derivative of stuff. And we can tell that we got it right because it matches the graph that was there. So what questions do you have on the derivative of cosine of x squared? Or put a y in the chat window if you're ready to move on to the next page, the next slide. So let's use another one here. We're going to do negative sign, copy down stuff. And then we need to multiply by stuff prime. So the derivative of the square root of x, that's like x to the 1 half. So we could have 1 half x to the subtract 1, negative 1 half. I don't remember if this is checking answers or not. It doesn't. Oh, we got it. Yes. Good. Okay. So just a reminder that anytime we have a function inside of another function, we have to use the chain rule. The chain rule is derivative of the outside, stuff in the inside, multiply by stuff prime. Okay. So same thing on this problem. And if you can go back and, and take a look at that. Good. So you do the minus sign, copy down the stuff, multiply by the derivative of stuff. Okay, and then I need to multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Okay, so hopefully you're getting tired of these. It's cosine of stuff. We always do minus sine, copy down stuff, multiply by stuff prime. It's the same thing. Minus sine, copy down stuff, hopefully correctly, and then multiply by stuff prime. Okay. So the reason I had to fill these all in is now we have a table so we can take a look at the patterns. So if you have cosine of stuff, notice we are always doing minus sine, plug in the stuff, multiply by stuff prime. Okay, so that's our pattern. So now what if the stuff inside a cosine is some function, but we don't know what it is? Like we, we know there's a function, we know it depends on x, but we don't know what it is, right? So what do we do about that? Well, we just treat this as some unknown and we're gonna write down minus sign, copy down the stuff, multiply by stuff prime. Okay, so we're gonna do the derivative of cosine of f of x. So we said minus sign, copy down the stuff. I don't know any better name to give it other than, um, than this. And then multiply by the derivative of stuff, which I could name this way or I could name it with dfdx. But do we see how we overlapped the graph that was there? So it's a nice way to check that we got the derivative right. Okay, so this is kind of the crucial thing um, to understand that it's the derivative of the outside, plug in stuff, multiply by stuff prime. Because cosine of x, cosine of f of x is an implicitly defined function, I can't tease it apart, get all the x's on one side and only one y on the other side. They're all kind of mixed together. This is a way for us to do this derivative. Okay, there's some slides here on the notation. So you can either use y prime or we can use dy dx. But the basic idea is you do the derivative of the outside. So like your three stuff squared, you plug in stuff, you multiply by stuff prime. The only time you don't have to do that is when your stuff is x. So if your stuff is not x, you do this. Because we're basically just coming off the chain rule, okay? Questions or why if you're ready to move on to the next slide. So here's a little review of what we talked about before, the difference between explicit and implicit. So you can just take a look at that on your own time. We can actually multiply through by the denominator and then add or subtract two to both sides so we can make this look like an explicit relationship. And you can kind of do that algebra on your own if you want. I'm going to push through the slide because this is just algebra. Okay. Um, and if we look at the graph, we get something that looks like a function. It passes the vertical line test, okay? Now, 
This is a parabola. It has a hole in it, so it's a little p point of interest there. Um, but this thing passes the vertical line test, so we can treat it with all of our derivative stuff that we've learned so far. That all works. This one is still a parabola, but it's on its side, so it would not pass the vertical line test, right? So we could either treat this implicitly, or we can split it into two pieces, the top part of the curve and the bottom part of the curve, and work with each part explicitly. So I'm going to let you all work on this slide. This is slide 13. Um, I need to join a breakout room real quick, so I'll come back, but slide 13. So make sure you copy down y squared minus 6 equals 3x. And um, I'll just throw that in the chat window real quick. So we all have what we need to work on. y squared minus 6 equals 3x. And your job is to solve explicitly for y. And you should have two functions to do this. You need two different functions to get there. OK? So do that, and I will check back with you in just a moment. Yeah, so you should get plus or minus square root of different bits. And if we're just looking with what do they want here in the top one, which equation represents the top? That should be the positive square root, so 3x. And we add 6 to both sides. OK? So we can sometimes take an equation that looks like it might be implicit and then rewrite it explicitly, but we might need to do two separate functions. So that's kind of a trick to keep in mind that if you do this, you might need to do two separate functions. So if you needed a derivative here, you could make that work. Um, in fact, here's an example where you can actually do the derivative so you can see what the derivative looks like. So we would have a derivative for the first one and a derivative for the second one. But again, I'm going to kind of move on a little quickly here. And this is just showing you that if you change your x values, you get different derivatives. You get two derivatives. For each x, you have two derivatives. You have a derivative on the top function and a derivative on the bottom function. OK, so here's where we get into actually taking derivatives implicitly. So we're just going to pretend that we can't tease this one out. We can. We could solve this for y, but let's pretend we can't um, and just play around with what's going on. So the first term is only a term of x, so we can do that derivative like normal. And the 4x on the other side is only a term of x, like there's only x in it, so we can do that derivative like we're used to doing. But the middle term, the xy, there's an x and a y in there. So that's where we have to be a little more careful. And first of all, the xy means we need a product. So we're going to do the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So we just set it up in the product rule form. And the first bit, um, the only place we're doing a derivative is a function only of x. So the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So that term leaves us just with a y. This is other term where things are different. We have x times something we need to take the derivative of with respect to y. And so we'd say, OK, we'll have some function here. It's a function that depends on x. I don't know what it is. Um, but I can take the derivative, which is just going to be 1, and then I multiply by stuff prime, which is dy dx. Or you're saying, I need to take the derivative of y with respect to x, but I don't know what y is. So you literally write down the derivative of y with respect to x. So yeah, we could have at the start, we could have solved for y, but we're going to run into expressions where we cannot do that. So I want to practice. I want to practice what happens when we cannot solve for y. If I were doing this one, I would probably solve for y and then go to town. Although, what would I have? I would have 4x minus x squared all over x, and I'd have to worry about division by 0. I don't know, 6 of 1 to a half dozen of the other. Yeah, you could subtract the x to x squared and then divide everything by x and then take the derivative. But we also want to practice doing this strategy in case we run into a situation where we cannot isolate y. So this is just practice. OK? So you fill in all the pieces, all the derivatives, and then you isolate your dy dx. And so you end up with this piece down here. So you can always come back to this to read through it more slowly. But the basic idea is we will run into situations where we cannot tease out the x and the y. They're, they're linked together. And so we have to learn this strategy. Um, this slide is just a review of doing tangent line equations. 
So if you have a point and a slope, you can write the equation of a line in point slope form. So you put your slope in front and you put your x coordinate there and your y coordinate there. And then your y and your x stay as variables. So you get your y is equal to slope, x stays as a variable, this is your x coordinate, and then f of x naught is the same thing as your y coordinate. So it's just kind of a reminder of that. Okay, so this is another one where we could solve this explicitly. We could get two different functions, but let's practice doing implicit differentiation, okay? So I want you all to put, let me know in the chat window what you think y prime is. So you're gonna take the derivative of each piece with respect to y, sorry, with respect to x, and then you're gonna solve the equation for either dy, dx, or y prime, whatever notation you use. And let me know in the chat window. Yeah, so if we get started, the derivative of x squared is just gonna be 2x. I'm not writing the final answer here, I'm just doing an intermediate step. And then the derivative of y squared would be 2y, but we also need the chain rule. So we have to multiply by the derivative of y. And all of that is gonna equal zero. So that's your first step. This isn't the final answer, that's just the first step, okay? And so let's isolate for y prime. So let's move this 2x onto the other side. So we'll have a negative 2x now. And then we need to isolate for y prime. So we're gonna divide everything by 2y. Or we can go ahead and simplify and divide those twos out. So yeah, we end up with a negative x divided by y. Mm -hmm. Good, a lot of you are, are getting that, okay. So yeah, I would try to take those twos out. Sorry, I just forgot of the rid of the y prime. Yep, good catch in the chat window there. Okay, questions on that derivative? Okay, so now we can play around with what can we do with the derivative? Well, we can do the tangent line. So when you plug zero in for x and two in for y, we can do that. We can plug in and get something. What if these coordinates were switched? What if it was the point two comma zero? What would happen if we were trying to find the slope of the tangent line at the point two comma zero? What would happen if x were equal to 2 and y were equal to 0? What happens to the slope there? Yeah, somebody put the tangent line equation in there. Great. But what about the slope? What's the slope of the line to the point 2 comma 0? And why, why is this something we need, might need to worry about? Can y be 0 algebraically? If I wanted to plug 0 in, yeah, we have, we have an issue. We divide by 0. Yeah. So implicit differentiation opens up some doors to actually work with things that may not play nice with functions, right? If this were an actual function, well, the function bit means we have two different um, y values for given x, but we need to be kind of paying more attention to zero slopes or undefined slopes. Okay, but let's go back to the question it did ask. Um, write the equation of the line tangent to this. So the slope is going to be zero, right? If I plug zero in, I get a zero for two and I get a num some number on the bottom. Zero divided by number is still zero. So we do x minus the x coordinate. And then I need to add in the y coordinate. Okay. And so we could write it that way. We could also just write two y equals two, and we get the nice line here, and it's at the point zero two, and it looks like a tangent line, so we did okay. All right, if we were to play with this at other points, we might have to be a little more careful about looking for the uh, vertical tangent lines. So here's another question we could ask. At what x, y coordinates will I have a vertical tangent line? So in the chat window, give me an x, y coordinate on the circle where my tangent line would be vertical, where the slope would be undefined. Yeah, when x is equal to two or negative two, and then the y is equal to zero. So those are questions we can ask you as well. It's like find all the points where the slope is, is zero or undefined or something like that. Okay, and now I think we're caught up to the, uh, the, first, the first one that we had here. So that's kind of the overview of implicit differentiation. So if you have questions, maybe put those in the chat window. And now does this derivative make a little bit more sense, hopefully? So now we're, we're realizing that, okay, the x cubed, we can treat that like a normal derivative and get the three x squared. The y squared is stuff squared. So we do two times stuff, copy down the stuff, multiply by stuff prime. That's coming right out of the chain rule. 
and then the derivative of eight is zero. So then we just need to isolate the y prime. So we move the three x squared onto the other side and then we divide everything by two y. 